So uh, for everybody's benefit, I do want you to share um, your own personal, how you're doing with the whole coronavirus lockdown quarantine kind of stuff. So okay. like emotionally, mentally, spiritually, how are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. I think uh, there are ups and downs all the time. Um, and then I think those ups and downs are maybe a little bit more severe right now while things are so unsure. Um, I think in general, I've been really blessed with how stable my life has maintained uh, the stability that I've been able to keep. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely have, I have periods of feeling that isolation kind of pressing in. Um, you know, even when I do have human interaction, it's frequently through a screen or it's with, you know, the same very small set of people. Um, um, and that is hard. Uh, I'm definitely an introvert, so it took a while for it to get hard, but it did happen and we are there. So <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people are feeling that because, you know, you've got this dual emotion where it's like, uh, I've got some good things going on that I'm really grateful for, but right. <laughs> at the same time, I really want life to get back to normal. Yeah, and I think I think the longer this goes on, the more I realize I don't really want it to go back to something. Um, I think there were things about the way I was managing my time or living my life or things I thought were important before that definitely aren't, and it will be okay if I don't pick them back up again or if I pick them back up differently. Um, but I don't want it to be this forever. Uh, this isn't great. <laughs> um, but I, 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 the, like I said, the longer it goes on, the more it feels like a, like a tunnel rather than a pit. Um, so there's something else on the other side of this that I'm moving toward instead of just feeling really stuck, um, which at the beginning was definitely the way it felt was just, just this horrible quagmire of, you know, what are we going to do from here? You said that you don't want life to go back to normal. Have you figured yeah. out, have you figured <laughs> out what those, what those changes are now that you're, you're hoping kind of persist or are there lessons that you're learning in all this? Yeah, I'm not, I don't think I have it all figured out by a long stretch, but um, something that's been cool that's blossomed out of this is the intentionality of human connection. Like before I think, we, like I am an introvert, but it took a long time to realize that because I'm pretty outgoing in a lot of circumstances. So I do like people and I like being around people. And I realized that a lot of times before my like people tank would get filled with like really minor interactions throughout with the cashier at the store or like, a brief conversation with the coworker at work or things like that. And then I would be able to come home at the end of the day and just fully cocoon and like not need or want to interact with anybody else. And now if I want to have any human contact, I have to seek it out. And it's made me learn who's available for that and who, who wants it. And I have just so many people in my life that, um, that want to talk to me and like, I should do a better job of making that happen all the time. Like I have spent more time on the phone with like high school friends the past few weeks than I, they ever have, you know, like these, these are people that I love and care about. And usually it's just like, you know, a passing connection. And now it's like, okay, who haven't I talked to recently that I could bother because I've been bothering, you know, a lot of people. Um, and I've realized my well is very deep of, of people that, that want to spend time and that, are happy to spend time with, with me. So it's just been cool to be to be limited and to have to be intentional. Interesting. Well, let's <laughs> let's talk a little bit about anxiety. What's been your personal journey when you hear the word? What does it say to you? Um, it's like a it, for me. It can be like a, just a baseline state of worry. Like it's not always crippling. But it's just like there of just these things are taking up space in my head and I'm not able to let them go. And they can be good things or bad things. Um, I get anxious when something good is coming or when something bad is coming or when I don't know what's coming, which is like basically means I'm anxious all the time. Um, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's just, it's just a, a constant state of like low level panic or worry. <laughs> <laughs> a constant state of low-level panic. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a good definition. I might just use that. <laughs> constant state of low-level panic. So then, and you can mitigate it. You, know, you can make it be less constant, but it, it's kind of just always there. <laughs> are there times in your life when it's more or less? Like, Are there triggers, things that cause your anxiety to go up? Or how does that work for you? 
So I have the added fun of not just having an anxiety diagnosis, but also having a bipolar disorder diagnosis. So those things kind of play with each other hand in hand um, and make it just like a soup in there sometimes. <laughs> so, so yeah, so any change is hard. Um, and I'm getting better about change being hard. Can you sense when that anxiety is rising? Like, are you being, are you able to get the sensitivity so that you can notice it like when it's down here at the lower level? Sometimes, yeah. Um, like, I often it happens when I like hear myself say something that's just objectively crazy or like, <laughs> um, or like that I would never really mean. And it's not always, that's why uh, having people to talk to is so important to me because I'm a really external processor. So I, I have a counselor that I see, you know, every two weeks and she's fabulous. Um, but then also just talking to friends and talking to people in between and people that I trust so that if I do say that, you know, crazy thing, I can, you know, dial that back. Um, but usually like, like two or three seconds after I say something that's like, whoa, I don't mean that. And then I can like, you know, sanity brain can come back for a minute and be like, where am I? How did I, how did I get to this point of panic? And then like walk it back to a, a more reasonable state. <laughs> so you're saying sometimes you don't even know that you're panicked until after you hear your own words. Yes, frequently. Yeah. Um, so how do you manage it? How do, how do you deal with it when you when you realize that you're kind of in a moment of anxiety? How do you, how do you, what's your um, coping mechanism? Um, well, the good coping mechanism that I use sometimes um, is to hand that to God. And I, I, I am getting better at doing that more. Um, but honestly, like that does not happen every time. And I'm not going like, to sit here and pretend that it does. Um, so more often, <laughs> um, I, I make a joke of it. Like I said, like I, I just, I try to package it in a way that my brain can process um, where I don't get mad at myself for it because that's something that can make it spiral worse. I'm always amazed that it seems like everybody has a very similar story when it comes to anxiety, that you start feeling the anxiety and then you blame yourself for feeling the uh -huh. anxiety. And then you get worried about how long the anxiety feeling is going to yep. last. And then you're anxious about the anxiety. Yep. And then you, you feel you feel silly or you feel dumb or weak or whatever. Um, yeah. So kind of to close out the time a little bit, um, give me give me kind of an example from your perspective of what it means when you when you successfully hand it over to God. What what yeah. does that actually mean? Um, it doesn't have to be a big thing. Like, um, with the bigger, bigger anxiety takes more intentional time to do that. Um, sometimes I literally do go shut myself in my closet. I have a, an empty closet in my room that is for like specifically meeting God for things. Um, but other times it can be just as I'm existing. Um, and so instead of, you know, packaging it as a joke, I package it as a thing that's not mine. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, yep. I can't do anything about that. You know? If I, if I make myself sit and stew in it, um, alone in that closet by myself in the dark, um, where I can't be distracted by other things and let it become that baseline anxiety in the background again, where like, no, like we're going to, we're going to stay in this until my brain realizes I can't fix it. Um, <laughs> and then I'll be able to, to successfully hand it to God. Um, instead I turn it into just a thing that I don't have to deal with. Like it's, it's not my thing. It is God's thing. So it's still like a packaging and a separation. Um, but it's, it, the jokes still linger, you know, like that's still there and it's still this thing that I make fun of myself for. Um, so it's still me or it's still on me. Um, but when I hand it to God as a thing that like, Hey, I can't do anything with this, but God can. And so it's on his plate now. Um, that is the most healthy way to handle it. <laughs> anyway, Amanda, that was perfect. Thank you so much for being willing to share. Um, I'll let you no get problem. back to the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me.